Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, UTLA family, parents, community members. It's good to be with you again in our virtual space for the final Facebook Live of the year. Yes, you all made it. Some good news late last night. We reached a bargaining extension uh, on our distance learning agreement. This agreement is reflective of the hard work and dedication of our UTLA bargaining team and meets the need for stability for our members and our students and families who are experiencing the realities of this catastrophic pandemic every day. The biggest news is that the workday remains the same. And today, bargaining co-chair Arlene Inoue will walk us through the agreements, which we will post in the chat below. We will have the members of the bargaining team on deck to answer questions in the chat. So ask your questions. After the bargaining update, we will be speaking on the new grading policy for secondary students and the call for a lockdown in the month of January to disrupt the virus surge and save lives. First, I would like to bring on bargaining co-chair Arlene Inoue. Arlene? Thank you, Cecily. And greetings to all of the UTLA family, friends and students and community. On this very last day before the winter recess, I am so glad to report that we have signed three side letter agreements. These side letters provide stability and consistency during a pandemic and will end January uh, and June 30th, 2021, or when LAUSD students physically return to schools for regular or hybrid instruction, whichever comes first. I appreciate our amazing UTLA bargaining team who have been going at it day and night to get the very best agreement we could. So a shout out to Javi Romo from Valley West, Victoria Casas, Valley East, Stacy Webster, Central, Rosa Jimenez, North, Adrian Tamayo, East, Jennifer Valario, West, Cynthia Matthews, South, Jen McAfee, Harbor, Mallory Evans, HHS Special Categories, and our UTLA Research and Analytics Director, Grace Regulano, Elementary VP, Gloria Martinez, Secondary VP, Julie Van Winkle, and my co-chair, Executive Director, Jeff Good. Additionally, we had nurses and other members involved at the, at the bargaining table and in the process. We have been, been engaged in distance learning since last March, and there is now increasing political pressure to force schools to reopen from politicians who have yet to provide the resources to do it safely or the leadership necessary to control the virus. Under very difficult circumstances, including a looming December 31st expiration of our current distance learning agreement, we were able to bargain an extension that provides stability for our members, our students, our communities in this time of enormous upheaval with only minor modifications. The extension maintains a 360 minimum day for classroom teachers, which is required by state law. It maintains the same total instructional minutes in our current side letter. It maintains work flexibility for members outside of the school instructional day, which we consider really important during a pandemic. It maintains guaranteed work for substitute members and maintains current synchronous instructional requirements Tuesday to Friday. While we know that distance learning could never replicate in-person instruction with students, 
we provided more time within the 360 minutes to connect with students and families by one additional synchronous instructional minutes on Mondays for grades one to 12. Two, 15 additional minutes at the end of Monday for professional development, grade level or department meetings. Three, 30 minutes of additional office hours on Tuesday to Friday for connecting with students and families and with teachers having the flexibility to schedule these minutes at their discretion. The district also made it clear that they needed school nurses to provide mandatory in-person services to assist with the COVID-19 testing and in helping schools develop health plans for when it's safe to physically reopen. They have a right to assign nurses to assist on services performed at schools and provided to the public as stated in Article 3, Section 3.0 DNE. Now more than ever, everyone is realizing the essential role of the nursing profession in our society, which we have understood. That's why ensuring that every school has a nurse every day was an essential part of our 2019 strike. While recognizing this need, we also needed to bargain to ensure the safety of our school nurses when they provide the in-person services. An agreement was reached on a nurse's side letter that will require them to provide in-person service five days per week, working at the testing sites and in their key role as medical educational experts at the school site. In addition to the regular rate, school nurses will receive extra compensation for working in person at testing sites and their assigned schools. There are accommodations for childcare, high risk health, if one becomes ill with COVID or has to take care of a household member who becomes ill with COVID, with adherence to all county, state and federal workplace safety requirements and all of the procedures and protocols previously negotiated in the Voluntary Nurses Agreement. Stephanie Yellen Mednick, school nurse and chapter chair says, quote, like frontline healthcare workers all across the country, school nurses are stepping up at this time of great need. A robust school-based testing program is essential for the health and safety of everyone during this medical crisis and school nurses have a unique skill set to provide it." End quote. Once schools physically reopen, nurses will go back to working at their school sites in their regular assignments. The last side letter is for the 2021 spring semester pupil free day and smart start, which recognizes the ongoing, ongoing professional development needed to mitigate the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on students and families. January 11th will be designated a pupil-free day with the switch of June 11th to an instructional day. A smart start will start on Tuesday, January 12th and go through January 22nd to allow teachers and students to focus on relationship building and social emotional learning while allowing instructional program flexibility. There are provisions for substitute teachers to fully participate. And lastly, UTLA also agreed to bargain and reach plans for the eventual hybrid instructional schedules and targeted in-person services for high need students in January. The parties are obligated to reach an agreement on plans, but community health and safety metrics will determine when those plans are implemented. Please see the email and on the website, the full agreements are posted. And so when we return in, to bargain in January, we're gonna need to activate our school site organizing to continue to work together to protect our members, our students and families. But until then, on behalf of the UTLA bargaining team, 
May you all have a safe, healthy, and reinvigorating holiday season. Thank you so much. And back to you, Cecily. Thank you, Arlene, for all of that information on the bargaining side letters. In the lead up to the holiday season, we're experiencing an explosive and very deadly surge of the coronavirus. On average, two LA County residents are dying from COVID-19 every hour. Local hospital ICU beds have no capacity and we have a long road ahead before the vaccine will have an immeasurable impact on infection and death rates. UTLA and a coalition of labor unions, public health officials and community organizations are calling on the LA County Board of Supervisors to take decisive action now and implement a circuit breaker lockdown for the month of January. A circuit breaker is a limited time action with critical safety nets that will allow businesses to stay closed and people to stay safe at home. A circuit breaker can reverse the tide of the epidemic, reduce pressure on our healthcare system, and ultimately allow for a quicker reopening of schools and the economy. We have to be clear, we are not in a real lockdown now. While some people are able to stay home to work, the working class and poor people of Los Angeles have to choose between risking their lives or putting food on the table for their families. A shutdown must be accompanied by a financial survival package for workers as well. We will never get back into schools safely with our students if we do not prioritize the educational and health needs of school-age children, especially our highest needs students by doing what is necessary to bring the virus under control so that safe in-person instruction can once again be a possibility. We'll put links in the chat to the letter we sent to the LA County Board of Supervisors. Organizations joining us in this call for a lockdown represent a broad spectrum of LA workers, including grocery workers, nurses and healthcare workers, educators, and hotel and restaurant employees. And they are telling some powerful stories. Respiratory therapist Michael Rivera works at Providence Cedar sinai Tarzana Medical Center. Yesterday, he moved a patient into the hospital's last available ICU unit bed. He says he's what he's seeing dwarfs the LA uprisings. That event doesn't even move the needle compared to the carnage we're seeing now. Housekeeper Liliana Hernandez has managed to stay healthy so far, but she lost her job at the Santa Monica Hotel in March. So did her husband who buses tables at the restaurant. He returned to work in July only to be laid off again the week before Thanksgiving. She sees the call for a circuit breaker and the necessary safety nets as a lifeline. Parent Alicia Baltazar says her son is struggling with distance learning and she wants a lockdown so we can get on the other side of this virus surge and her son can return to school. You can add your voice to their voices we are circulating an online petition to call on LA County's elected leaders to take bold leadership based on science and rooted in equity. I encourage you to sign the petition to demand a four week circuit breaker with real safety nets to allow businesses to stay closed and workers to stay safe at home to suppress the virus and save lives. We'll put the petition link in the chat. Sign it and share it on your social media outlets. This has been a grueling week for secondary teachers. The last week of the semester is always a busy time for educators and students, but it was made more intense by the district 
abrupt change in grading policy to convert all fall semester grades of a fail to an incomplete to allow failing students time to complete missing assignments. One secondary teacher said the new grading policy was dropped on teachers like an anvil during finals week. Teachers are feeling disrespected and horribly treated by LAUSD for this short notice. This policy was not bargained with UTLA. It's all the more frustrating because educators support empathy and compassion for students in this unprecedented time. But this is not the way to do it. And it does not resolve the complicated issues of grading during a pandemic. Stevenson Middle School teacher Marcella Chagoya posted on Facebook about the new grading policy and this extraordinarily difficult and unusual school year. Marcella broke it down into things she knows and things she doesn't know. Things she knows. Her students have tried this semester as best as they could with what circumstances they have faced. And as their teacher, she also did her best by them. Things she doesn't know, the daily living conditions of her students and their loved ones during this pandemic and the extent to which it has affected their participation. The pandemic has exposed so many systemic problems with our education system from underfunding to insufficient resources to over testing and now grading. Disproportionately black and brown students and students in foster care and who are experiencing homelessness are receiving an increased number of D's and fails. Failing grades affect students' lives on a long-term basis. And since the memo was published on Monday, UTLA has been pressing LAUSD to make sure the new grading policy rolls out in the best way possible, including extending windows and deadlines to allow ample time to work with students on grade improvement after the winter recess. Yesterday, the Division of Instruction sent a memo entitled Important Schoology Grading Updates for Teachers to all local district superintendents. This memo states that the grading window and pass back have been extended to December 22nd. The linked FAQ in the memo clearly states that the December 17th due date for incomplete forms is flexible. UTLA will be discussing the grading issue among our leadership bodies and with the larger membership. And we hope to work with the district to develop a better policy for the spring semester. The grading issue is a top down decision that LAUSD imposed on teachers, much like the top down decision this year to mandate extra standardized tests that are not required by the state. These tests that LAUSD is imposing include Edulastic and Renaissance. These assessments are putting an undue burden on instructional time and are out of place in our crisis distance learning reality. We are pushing back against these unnecessary assessments that are not state mandated and we'll be holding meetings to engage our parents in this important pushback. Your stories will be critical as we escalate our campaign against LAUSD's excessive assessments. We need your feedback on how difficult and frustrating administering these non-mandated assessments have been for both educators and students. We'll put a link in the chat below. It's a simple Google Doc to give your input on testing. And now a huge shout out to our new National Board Certified Teachers. This cycle, 46 UTLA educators earned certification for the first time and 60 educators recertified. Earning certification is a serious achievement. If you've ever known someone who has gone through the NBCT process, 
you know it is as grueling and intense as any professional development experience. Like board certified physicians and accountants, teachers who achieve national board certification have met rigorous standards through intensive study, expert evaluation, self-assessment and peer review. UTLA has actively supported the MBCT, MBCT process for many years now, and our UTLA building is home to the support network, a collaborative UTLA LAUSD program that offers facilitated workshops and peer support for MBCTs. Every year, LAUSD usually has one of the most diverse classes of MBCTs and one of the largest in the nation. So let's give it up for our 46 new national board certified teachers. If you hear a colleague's name, give them a whoop whoop in the chat below. Soshi Bentley, Rita Cabezas, Nikki Campbell, Abraham Catan, Sarah Cho, Lorraine De Leon, Danny Duarte, Julie Jurgis, Norma Gutierrez, Susanna Hall, Michelle Halpern, Osas Ayoji, Karen Juarez, Jessica Kane, Bard Kusaka, Monica Lerfkutlanich, Cindy Lou, Carmina Limon, Lucky Long, Tanya Mandel, Lauren Manning, Youssef Mari, Jessica Mello, Jennifer Morris, Martha Munoz, Angelina Murphy, Hector Nieves, Melissa Oki, Suzanne or Susan Osario, Cynthia Salceda, Yvette Salmaron, Suzanne Silverstein, Linda Smith, Julie Sornberger, Christina Stewart, Nancy Velvarde, Adriana Vinarski, Elaine Vasorti, Amy Weisberg, Hixel Wester, Nick Westfall, and Adriana Savala. Please excuse me as I said those names and I'm sorry if I mispronounced anyone's name. I'll put a link in the chat below for the support network in case any of you out there are thinking of taking on this challenge. And the support network website will be posting names of all the MBCTs, our new group, and the 60 who successfully recertified. Please note that the teachers listed are only the first wave of the MBC class of 2020. Due to the pandemic, some renewal and first-time candidates took advantage of the extension offered by the National Board. Congratulations to all of you. You make us proud. You make your family and friends proud as well as your students will reap the rewards of your dedication to keep pushing yourself. Now we come to a shout out to our education community. First up is teacher Dan Barnhart who invited me to co-teach his Zoom class with his students at Central High this week. The students gave me so much life and joy. They engaged me with questions and were intuitive, smart, and witty. It reminded me of how much I miss teaching in a classroom and how much I miss engaging with students. It was so fulfilling to have students share their experiences about being traumatized and criminalized in their school setting, about wanting respect, and to feel like they have the power to change their circumstances and the world around them. So thank you, Dan, for sharing your class with me. Now we have to give a shout out to 28th Street Elementary School community who showed up in a big way 
for a school family who suffered a tragedy. A 28th Street parent passed away unexpectedly earlier this year, leaving behind a wife and five children. Two of the children are currently students at the school and the other three had attended the school as well. The teachers led by UTLA member Lorena Sanchez organized an online fundraiser to support the family and they raised along with other school staff and community more than $4,000. Thank you chapter chair Martha Duran for letting us know about this. There is so much sorrow in the world but there is also so much heart. And just a quick note about a free resource. The magazine In These Times, which covers politics, culture, and the movement for workers' rights, is offering a free 12-issue magazine subscription to union members in the US. No strings attached, no credit card needed. Today is the last day to sign up and I'll put the link in the chat below. Now we mark recent losses to our extended UTLA family. Germina Pulido, a teacher at Panorama City Elementary, passed away suddenly last Friday. Her former colleague, Yamila Estrada, shared this sad news with us. Ms. Pulido worked as a teacher at Noble Elementary a Title III coordinator at Alta California Elementary and a fifth grade teacher at Panorama City, where she was well liked by the teachers and students and had a voice in faculty meetings. Pedro Ramirez, the father of UTLA AFT Vice President Juan Ramirez, passed away this month. Juan shares that his father, coming from a very humble family, always pushed his children to become good, respectful human beings and to always strive to do better than he did. Juan says it is a lesson that his family really took to heart. The Harbor area lost a warrior for labor justice and for public education with the passing of Charles Theo Carlos Prinson. Charles was a union man and proud of it. He supported efforts of organizing drives, picket lines and mobilizing the community. He was part of the successful fight to stop the co-location at Catskill Elementary. And he stood in solidarity with educators during the UTLA strike of 2019. He volunteered at the Parent Center at Banning High School, where he loved everyone, and most importantly, our future Banning pilots. We keep the families and friends of Guillermina Pulido, Pedro Ramirez, and Theo Carlos in our thoughts. And now I'll close with my heartfelt wishes for a peaceful winter break. This will be the last Facebook Live until we reconnect in 2021. But we will continue to share news and developments on our website and social media pages. A UTLA member posted on Facebook that he's so used to working crazy hours that when the work stops on Friday night, he gets a little depressed. And then he asked, weird, right? No, not weird. We are all working so hard that many of us have forgotten how to relax. I hope you have saved a final bit of energy to envision and to plan for a restorative winter break. At my house, our theme is going to be cozy and connected with an emphasis on sleeping in, reading new books for long stretches at a time, drinking tea, holding Zoom happy hours with friends and taking nighttime walks with my son Giovanni and my mother Mary to see which of our neighbors have gone over the top with Hanukkah, Christmas, Posada and Kwanzaa decorations this year. I have made a huge mental note to leave my phone at home for these walks, 
not to just put the phone on vibrate, but leave the damn thing behind. My family will lead our holiday with gratitude for all the folks who are working with extraordinary courage amid the threat of COVID-19. Every day, even at this terrible virus surge, puts them at greater risk. Nurses and other healthcare professionals, bus drivers, sanitation workers, grocery employees, and so many others show up to work to keep our communities going. Many of you know these essential workers. They're your sisters, your brothers, your partners, your friends, and your neighbors. And I am humbled by this, their courage in the face of loss and danger and outraged by a society that cannot do better to protect our essential workers. This will be a holiday season like no other after a year like no other. And I'm so proud to stand with you, the amazing educators of Los Angeles who through it all have kept learning alive for our babies. I'm so grateful for our union, our voice. We remain a powerful fighting union, even in these virtual times. We will come out together on the other side of this and it will happen because of you, our UTLA family. I want you all to have the peace and joy and love that your hands can hold this season. Stay UTLA strong. Get your deserved rest because together we rise.